And now what do we do? Now what, oh, what do we do? We got five sites. Now, there are different things we can do. Before, we'll, we'll, we'll address a few things here. Let's just put the round part in here first. And I know you're saying, ah, check up on the, on the part that's pentagonal. Well, let's see. Now, something I want to do, and I was just breaking the rules I just told you about, because I hadn't stopped to just do it. A lot of times, as you start putting it in, then you start following your rules. I want a flat just here and against a point, because those are two figures that I can deal with on the chuck jaws. And while I'm saying that, that's actually totally irrelevant because I thought I forgot again. We're doing a Pentagon. Pentagon is a whole different game. Okay, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because you don't want that one. You don't want the high point the same as the flat spot. You're not trying to split between those. You're trying to get in the center of all the flats. So it's sort of like what we were doing already with the uh, although that does still make it a little easier i'm still going to do that yeah, i am we're close to there anyway I almost moved it to there but yeah okay and that's going to make it easier because that will let me get one of the points quicker okay so now what we have are going to do and this goes through a couple couple of rounds of stuff sometimes okay we're going to put that at zero and I'm over there between the 13 and 14. I'm going to try and get it up here more evenish again. Eh, not like that. It's going to end up being different by the time we're done. My position that I want. Getting it in rough to start with is part of the harder part. And I'll turn this where we can all share. Okay, right about there. Okay, so I have a zero at 16. And over here, I have 17 at so this is actually a hundred I really need to write these down so we have a zero we have a we're up from that by a hundred and seventeen the next one oh we're up even more okay I probably should have just eyeballed it some <laughs> I wasn't eyeball but that's okay this will still work this will still work. So now we're at 16, 17, 18 is 200, 257. Actually, in some ways, being off this far is probably good for what I'm trying to show. But yeah, if I was just doing this totally outside of showing things, um, I'd probably look at the end of it and just move it around something to get started on a better number. So now we are again at 230 31 not that i think that one's that accurate and then back here on this last one and that's why because it's so far off where we were just barely getting it okay and this one here i am above the 16 by 71. now what we need to do is pull out our handy dandy calculator we need to average those and then that'll tell us where we're shooting for because you don't have somewhere directly across and uh, but your average is still an average and this will be our first average setting that we're shooting for so we have 71 plus 231 plus 257 plus 117 plus nothing equals that much and then if we divide that by we'll go with five i thought about being funny but i didn't really think that was a good idea we have 135.2 so we're going to just call it 135. so we're going to start trying to go for 135 for our number for where we should be and we should probably start with the one that's the most off which is the next one 
which is zero and was where we started. So that means we want to come this way by 135. Oops. Okay. Now the next one, being here on the side, is of course a little bit more difficult because we're not going directly across from our chuck, but we are at a hundred and fifty-three. So we need to go that way a little bit. At least we we yeah we know we do. Okay, we know we need to go that way a little bit. And I'm going to stop somewhere in there. We're at 140 because first time on averaging this, you may be a little bit off because you were picking up your center on some of these with your indicator way off to one side where you think that center was. You got to bring it in a little closer before you can really, these numbers were way off. But uh, that's close enough for next one. That one's 140-ish from where we started. 133 so we're, we're starting to get in there pretty quick pretty quick okay so now let's pick this one here and let's just start over make a new one and we'll go to zero and this zero is right about at 17 come over here we are at four uh, you get to a point where you can kind of start remembering them, but let's just go ahead and go zero, four. Nine. Next round, you'd be able to remember them. They're not going to be much different. I'm going to call that an eight. I really like using numbers for stuff when you can but I have a hard time with irrational numbers. I mean, if they're irrational, you should put them to bed. You should spank them, not give them anything to eat. Irrational numbers are not precise. They're irrational. So, okay, we want to average these again. 4.6. Okay, so we're going to five according to Bert. <laughs> Close enough, gang. Okay, we're going to come back here to this one, which is already real close to that. We need to go up just a little bit. So this one needs to be just loosened and it's actually not real tight already. Shy five, okay, shy five. Oops, yeah, yep, shy five, okay. Then we come over here. This one here, we need to go down. Yep, that one's pretty stuck. Shy five, one we didn't have to adjust. Shy five without adjusting. I think we're back to our beginning. Uh, yep, shy five. So we have now dialed in a pentagonal piece of stock. It didn't take nearly as long as a person might think it would. And you ain't going to do that on a three jaw. It don't work. Okay, so now, and part of why I put this in the mill, and I was going to leave more of the round piece out here so you could see how far out around it was running. I didn't leave enough out to dial it in on well. Although we could do that. Let's just do that for fun because that was part of why I purposely milled this eccentric. 
And that's something you can do a lot of times too, is bring stuff close to where it was with the jaws and by using the same jaws if you're doing production work you won't be dead on but always your same two jaws that you loosen will get you really close without doing a whole lot of movement and then you can just tweak it a little bit so that you can come back to where you were we're not quite as accurate as we were but we're still back in within a thousandth and that was what I was wanting to show you there was how you could do that and then check this one here to see and I don't know how much but how much run out you know because that's one of the things people would see a lot of times they'd see something like this this one's obviously out around with not not concentric with this round part but you don't know when you find this part here with the Pentagon on it this may have been some forged things this was precision machined somebody wants to throw it in here and put it according to the round part but if something drives on this, this is what you care about. You don't care about this round part. It's just what the stock was when they started. So you gotta care about the right part when you're dialing these things in. Um, and there was another thing we can do here too. We're gonna turn this around. So now we have this triangular stock, which it's not gonna be happy in the square. It's just not gonna be happy in a four jaw. You go to push it two sides. You basically have two jaws there, one there. And unless you're trying to, to dial it in way off center, it's not happy. You can put extra pieces in here and it's not happy. You could do it with some pieces in there. You could make a filler to go around. You can do all kinds of things. The simplest and most common thing to do is swap to a three jaw. Now, Okay, we swapped to a three jaw on our lathe though. Now we have a problem because this is not dead on with this. Let's go, go wobble, wobble, wobble. So now we still didn't do what we wanted to do. So what you do is you take your three jaw, you put it in your four jaw. So your three jaw chuck is here. You put a smaller three jaw chuck in here, which we have some, but I did, I'm not gonna dig it out right now. But you just put a smaller three jaw chuck in your four jaw chuck and you dial the three jaw so that it runs true on this and the three jaw holds this well because for holding it there's nothing wrong and whether the three jaw is true or not it's going to hold it three jaws three points beautiful they they fit each other they match um you know squares pegs all that stuff when we were kids and but then use the four jaw because i'll let you dial it in where it needs to be so that is a uh, little discussions on four jaws there might have been something else I was thinking of, but I think that was pretty much it. It was uh, pentagons and you can do other size, other stuff too. And you know, you, you do the hexagon and you start thinking, oh yeah, I can do anything in a four jaw. You can do a lot of stuff in a four jaw, but uh, there's some other, other jaw shapes and things that help. If you needed to, you could have special shaped jaws too that are still independent. What's nice is if you have all kinds of chucks. You know, if you had that three jaw, like I was talking about that years ago, I used to see where you had the three jaws that come down, you could just adjust the three jaws. Well, which on adjusting those, and that's where I first learned about this averaging. You got three jaws, you're used to doing the across from each other for four jaw, and you're like, okay, now what do I do with this pig? Um, you put lipstick on it. You make average out of the three points, you come around, okay, that works. And now you have a method that works for all kinds of whack, wacky, weird shapes. If you're trying to get them to match, take the average that gives you the number, shoot for that number, and it works. Okay.